All right, this is lesson one in plane geometry. The homework that goes with this is page two to five. Ignore this homework because it varies by year. All right, the first lesson on this, or first page of the note, is classifying triangles. Um, there's two ways to classify it, by the size of the angle and by the size. Let's start with the size. An equilateral triangle has three equal sides. And it'll look like this. Three equal sides. And if it has three equal sides, it also has three equal angles. If you've got three equal angles, we already know that the three angles in a triangle add up to 60 or 180. So this triangle will be 60, 60, 60 degree angles. Three equal sides, three equal angles. An isosceles triangle has two congruent sides. So it looks like this. And two equal angles. And they are the angles that are opposite that can be congruent sides. An isosceles triangle has two equal angles and two equal sides. A scalene triangle has three different sides and it will have three different angles. Okay, so equilateral, three equal sides, isosceles, two equal sides, and seeing three different sides. Now, <laughs> by the angle, an acute triangle has three acute angles. Let me remind you, acute means less than 90 degrees. So, if I gave you this, 60, 59, and 61, that is acute because all three angles add up to 180 and they're all less than 90. Obtuse has one obtuse angle. Obtuse means it's greater than 90. So this might be 100 degrees. That's an obtuse angle. Now, it makes sense, there cannot be two obtuse angles in a triangle because it will look like this, a fat angle there and a fat angle there. Well, it's not going to be a triangle because they have to add up to one angle. And a right triangle has one right angle. And again, if it's only one, right angle is 90 degrees. That little box shows that. All right. The sum of the angles in a triangle adds up to 180. We already know this. So, let's solve for n. n plus 50 plus 95 equals 180. Solve n plus, this will be what, 145 equals 180. Subtract 145 from both sides. So, n is 35 degrees. And if I added those three up, I would get 95. Or, I'm sorry, 180. All right, now, you can read through this, but this basically says the longest side in a triangle is opposite the biggest angle, and the longest, or the shortest side is opposite the smallest angle. So, this triangle field has side lengths shown in the figure. What is the largest angle? Well, this is the largest side, so I'm going to go opposite that. The largest angle is B. Largest angle is B. Now, if I ask you what the smallest angle was, but it doesn't do that. So let's do it. Smallest angle would be opposite the smallest side. So here's the smallest side. Smallest angle is that. Alright. A triangle has angle measures shown in the figure below. Write the sides in order shortest to longest. Alright. Well, again, let's look at these angles. This is the smallest angle. So let's go opposite. So R is going to be the shortest side. R is less than. That's the smallest. What's the next smallest angle? 52. Go opposite that. T is next. And that's less than. 84 is the biggest angle. So S will be the biggest side. This is one way to show it. R is less than T and T is less than S. It's going smallest to largest. Or you could just do this. But in your homework, some of the answers are going to be written like that, and I want you to understand what it means. All right. Write the side lengths of the triangle from least to greatest. Well, the first thing we need to do is find this missing angle. Well, let's do 101 plus 37 is 138, and subtract that from 180, and I get 42 degrees. So this angle is 42 degrees. So we want least to greatest. So smallest angle is 37. Opposite that is side C. That's the small. 42 is next. Opposite that is A. And 
101 is the largest, dopamine is the largest. Smallest to largest. All right, triangle inequality theorem. And I will show you this in class with some pieces of wood. But what you basically do is take two sides of the triangle, add them and subtract them, and the third side has to be in between them. And it makes more sense when you see it with the pieces of wood. But I'm going to do this problem. So, Melina uses chalk to draw a triangle on the sidewalk. Two of the sides of the triangle have lengths 15 and 22. What are the shortest and longest possible lengths of the third side? Assume each side's length is a whole number. So, take the two sides of this. 22 plus 15 gives you 37. So, if you made these two sides end to end, it would be 37 inches. But that wouldn't give you a triangle because it would be a flat line. And then if I put them next to each other the other way and I subtract them, I get 7. But again, that would be a flat shape. So our third side, X, has to be greater than 7. Look how many X is greater than 7. I'm doing that backwards. And X has to be less than 37. Or basically, X is between 7 and 37. It can't be 7 and it can't be 37. It could be 7.1, it could be 37.9, or 36.9. But it says whole numbers. So our whole numbers would be 8, 9, 10, dot, 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 all the way up to 36. So the greatest would be 36, and the least would be 8. 8 and 36. And if you did this with decimals, you could never write the smallest because it could be 7.1 or 7.01 or 7.001. <laughs> All right. Is it possible for the side length of a triangle of 8, 5, and 15 to form a triangle? Take the first two. Add that. 5 plus 8 is 13, and 8 minus 5 is 3. So our third side X has to be greater than 3 and less than 13. Is 15 inside this range? No, it's not. It's impossible. You can't have a triangle that has sides 5, 8, and 15. It's not physically possible. Not a triangle. Now, if I had 5, 8, and 7, is 7 in between these two? Yes, it is. This would be yes, a what if I gave you this one? 5, 8, and 13. Well, add and subtract. Is 13 in between these two numbers? No, it has to be less than 13. So not a triangle. If that was 12.9, it would work. 